Hello everybody. I wanted to do a video to show you how to use the convert to sheet metal command in SOLIDWORKS. And so that's what I've done here. I have this box that I modeled and then use convert to sheet metal to create this flat pattern, as you see here. So we're going to talk about how we go about using that command to generate this flat pattern and then also how to edit this convert to sheet metal feature after we've created it. So the first thing to talk about is uh, the types of parts that this will be successful on. So you see here, this is a box, and so this is a rectangular prism. And so convert to sheet metal will work on figures that have any kind of polygonal shape to its base that's then extruded straight. And so like this is a rectangular base and then extruded. This will also work on pyramids. So again, a pyramid of any type of base, so any kind of polygonal shape, and then uh, I use loft to create this, so loft it to a point, and these can be cut off like what you see here on this pyramid. And we also could have cut off this box at some angle too, and this will still work. The figures that this won't work on are cones and cylinders. So those are different sheet metal commands to produce flat patterns for cones and cylinders. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to create a new part here. And then what's nice about convert to sheet metal is you just go ahead and model this just like you would normally. So I'm going to click on sketch, click on the sketch icon. I'm going to click on the front plane to open a sketch there. Use my center rectangle command. And I'm going to put the center point right there at the origin. And I'm going to make this 12 by 15. So I've got that rectangle. Now I'm going to extrude it. And I just I like to use mid plane, so I'm going to use mid plane and extrude this a length of nine inches. Hit your green check mark. So now you've got your extrusion. Now we're ready to use convert to sheet metal. So if this sheet metal tab doesn't show up, what you want to do is just on any tab, right click, go to tabs, and then click on sheet metal, and then that tab will show up. So you click on sheet metal, click on convert to sheet metal. And then if you've assigned a material and you want to, to use that material, you can check that box. Uh, I normally just don't operate that way. So here under sheet metal gauges, I'm gonna check this box for use gauge table. Click here in this list. These are the out of the box tables that are loaded. Um, I teach a, a drafting class at a technical college. And so we just typically just use these. Uh, a lot of employers, they'll probably take these and make modifications to them. So I'm just going to always use sample table steel for what we're doing here. And so once you click on that, it takes all works uh, a few seconds to load this the first time. If you're doing a lot of sheet metal parts, it probably makes sense to go ahead and create a parts template that already has this table loaded. That way it saves you that time every every time of um, loading it in. All right, so once this is loaded, we just work down through the rest of these properties. So here in this first box is a fixed face. And so what I tell my students to use is use the largest face that you have. So I'm gonna orbit around to the back of this and click on this back rectangle. So that rectangle is 15 inches long and 12 inches tall. So that's the biggest face I have. So then you set your sheet metal gauge parameters and these are all preloaded in SOLIDWORKS. And so what I tell my students is, unless specified otherwise, we're gonna use 16 gauge because we just use a lot of objects out of the textbook. Uh, you in industry, you'll obviously know what sheet metal thickness you wanna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and select 16 gauge. There's a couple of check boxes here. So reverse thickness, if you zoom in where you clicked and you check reverse thickness, it's gonna push that thickness in and out. So that just comes down to when you model this, did you model it based off of outside dimensions of the box or inside dimensions of the box? And so depending on the answer to that is whether you'll want that box checked or not. I rarely use keep body, so I'm gonna skip over that. And then the next one there is override thickness. If you find yourself using that, you need to go and edit your gauge tables. Uh, when we're done here with this command, I'll show you where to find those gauge tables and you can edit those. So next box here is our bin radius. Uh, this is coming from the bin table. And so again, if you're working in industry, you're gonna know what bin radius you should use based off of your 
shops requirements. Uh, what I tell my students is just use the smallest one. All right, so then that gets us down here to bend edges. So now bend edges is anywhere where you want the metal to fold rather than to weld along a seam. So I want all of my longest edges. I want as many of those as possible to be folds rather than welded seams. So I'm going to select all of these long edges. And now I've got this fixed face. So that's going to be a fold and then another fold and then a fold. And then I've this is going to be a seam that's going to get welded. And now I'm going to attach the sides to it. So again, I'm going to select the longer edges of these two. So since this box is 12 tall and nine wide, I'm going to select this vertical line and then do the same on the other side. So now all those seams are selected. Uh, come on down here. I don't need to use rip edges for anything I'm doing. And then these corner defaults and the custom bin allowance, uh, that stuff's all going to come from your shop preferences and from your guys' experience. Uh, we're in an educational setting. So what I tell my students to use is use open butt for the corner default. We're setting this gap ratio equal to the sheet metal thickness. So for this one, we're going to use 0 0.0598. For the overall ratio for all rips, we just use 0.5. For K-factor, we use 0.5. And then for auto relief, we use tear. So you set all those, hit the green check mark. And if you did everything right, then you're going to get this. And so it, uh, what SolidWorks did is it, it ripped these seams, used those parameters, and created this flat pattern, and then created these bins here. So now we can go to the sheet metal tab, click on flatten, and there's our flat pattern. So I can click that icon up in the corner again. It takes me back to the folded version. And now I can show you where to find those bin tables. If you come up here to this gear, click on options. Make sure you're on system options. Come down here to file locations and show folders for change this to sheet metal bin tables and so that's where your sheet metal bin table is is uh, saved at so if you go to this folder there will be an excel spreadsheet there and you can either delete gauges or add gauges uh, change bin radiuses and so on and so that's where you can find it and open it what it's going to look like is going to be something like this this is the gauge table that we're using for this sample table steel english and so you can see the gauges, the gauge thickness, and then the, the available bend radiuses on there too. All right, so now um, things never go right the first time, so there's always changes that need to be made. So the way that we edit this, of course, if the size of your box changes, you're just going to come back to your feature and either change your sketch or change the, the size of your extrusion. Uh, so that's the easy stuff. So then the other stuff is here in the sheet metal folder. You can click on that folder, hit edit feature. And in here is where you're gonna select a different gauge table, or you can change your sheet metal thickness. You can change your bend radius. Your K factor is grayed out, so you can't change it. And auto relief, you can change it there too. So if you needed to, you can make any changes you need to in there. Then hit the green check mark, and those changes will populate. You can also look here in the sheet metal. So if you click on that, hit the feature, you can see in here, a lot of this stuff's grayed out. Uh, you're just allowed to override things in here. And it's really not the best way to use SOLIDWORKS by overriding these values. Uh, you really just need to come back and make your changes here in the sheet metal folder. All right, so then if you need to change like where a bend is or where a rip is, where we do that is in this convert solid feature. So if you go ahead and click on it, click on edit feature. And now you can do things like uh, take away or add bend edges. Like for instance, if I take away these vertical lines and so I just clicked in the bend edges box and then I clicked on the edge to remove it. And if I come over here to this other side, 
and click on that edge to remove to remove it. I hit my green check mark. Now what I've got is just the side walls. I don't have the base. I don't have this top. Okay. And so you can use this convert, convert to sheet metal command in that way as well. And then of course, if you want to bring them back, you click on convert solid, click on edit feature, just click in bend edges and you can bring them back just by clicking on them again. You can also change your fixed face. Uh, if for some reason you want to select a different face, you can select a different face. Probably want to collect or delete most of your bend edges if you do that and then reselect those bend edges. This is also where you'll find how to make changes to these corner defaults. So you've got some information here that you can edit to. So you can make any changes you want to in there. Hit your green check mark. It'll update. You can flatten it just to make sure it flattens and make sure that your flat pattern looks the way you want it to. Then if you're happy with the way it looks, the next thing would be to put it on drawing. So to put it on drawing, I first need to save it. So I'm just going to click on save. I'm just going to put this on my desktop and I'm just going to call this convert to sheet metal and hit save. Click on the new sheet of paper, uh, open up a drawing. Since this is already open, it's showing up here in my open documents, so I can just select it, hit my blue arrow to arrow over. I'm just going to click on create multiple views and I'm going to throw on my top view, my front view, my right view, and an isometric. So I'll go ahead and hit the green check mark there. It brings those views in there. Uh, what I ask my students to do is just put overall dimensions on here. So I just want from the overall height. So I'll go ahead and put that dimension on. I want the overall length. And then I want the uh, overall depth. So that's good for my principal views. I'm just going to move these over to the side and make room to put in my flat pattern. So now I'm just going to come back here to view layout, click on model view. Make sure convert to sheet metal is selected again, hit the blue arrow. And this time I'm just going to check the box for flat pattern. And then I'll come over here and just click some spot to put it. Um, the thing that's important to me is I want the bin lines to be visible and I want the bin note to be visible for these convert to sheet metal patterns. So this one's a little big, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it and then change the scale. So this thing looks like it all came in at a one to five scale. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the sheet scale on this. So I'm going to right click here on the drawing, go to properties, and we're going to use a one to four. So we're using a mechanical scale rather than a metric scale. And that looks a little big. So I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to come back here, go to properties, so another one we can use is 3 16 of an inch equals an inch. So that shrunk it down a little bit. This needs to go a little bit more. So I'm going to just going to click on this view. And again, I'll come down here and just change this to be a quarter of an inch to an inch. Went the wrong way. So I'll select it and we're going to make this uh, one to eight. So it'd be an eighth of an inch equals an inch. All right. So we get that thing down there. So then the last two things to do is I just want my students just go ahead and put an overall dimension on this flat pattern. So I know maximum height, maximum length. And then we want to put an area on here. So just come to evaluate, come to measure, select this flat pattern, and then just copy and paste this into a note and put it on the drawing and that's all there is to it so i hope you learned something from this convert to sheet metal tutorial and good luck making some flat patterns thanks for watching